Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I'm actor comedian Sean Kerrigan, and I'm hanging with Galaxy on ComCon Radio. My character gets to race him at Daytona, and uh, it was it was an honor. It was an honor to to play Walt Hansgen, and and uh, you know who was an also who was also an incredible racer. Guy was, you know, in 1957 he was a U.S. Sports Car Driver of the Year uh, by Sports Illustrated. And uh, he was just, he was, a, he was an incredible racer, and Ken Miles was an incredible racer, so was Carroll Shelby, and, and so I studied a lot about, like, you know, where, where he grew up and, and how he became a racer. He actually, Walt Hansgen started racing late in life, he started at 32, and remarkably, two years later, he wins Watkins Glen. He grew up working in, an, in his dad's auto shop and uh, learned a lot about cars, and he just really understood cars. And, uh, and he just he became a hell of a racer really fast. When you watch the movie, you're gonna feel like you're in the race car. That's one thing that, uh, that uh, James Mangold, he, you know, Jim, he, he, he made sure to you know, shoot a lot of stuff from in the car. And, and you'll feel it when you watch the movie, you feel like you're actually there. It's really, it's pretty cool. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Galaxy signing in for Comic-Con Radio. Coverage of pop culture events from around the globe. Amazing interviews with celebrities. Daily recaps and reviews of popular television. Movie reviews. Everything Comic-Con and fandom from around the globe. Comic-Con Radio. Get ready to enter our universe. Let's go. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Galaxy for another amazing episode of... Comic-Con Radio. Today, we have a really cool cat on the show. He's in the movie Ford versus Ferrari. We have Sean Kerrigan on Comic-Con Radio. Sean, what's up, brother? Welcome to the radio. Hey, man. How are you, man? Thanks for having me. Isn't that funny? I said, welcome to the radio. I should have said, welcome to the show. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, right. welcome to, to the, the radio, radio, man. <laughs> well, it's like a futuristic uh, show here, you know? <laughs> cool, man. Happy to be here, buddy. Thank you, man. So you're a busy guy. You're in movies. You've had some cool roles. Is acting what you wanted to do your entire life, or did you just stumble onto this thing that you you do you know i used to you know my poor mom i used to go watch movies and i'd come home and act them out for her uh <laughs> and she was very patient she'd sit there and watch me uh act all like you know different star wars movies out and then and then mom and then he did this and then luke skywalker did this <laughs> and so uh i think she knew i wanted to be an actor at a young age but unfortunately i didn't really get into it until later on in my career i went ahead and wrestled in college and i had an amateur and professional boxing career i came from a boxing family and so I kind of got that out of the way. And I always knew that I would go back to acting because I took drama in high school. So I always knew that I wanted to be an actor, but I had athletic goals that I put first. And then once I got those out of the way, then I went right back to acting. And I've been out in L.A. for 19 years now. So you're living the L.A. life. Do you really recommend people moving to L.A. when they're starting acting? A lot of people tell me you have to have a plan to come to L.A. these days. What do you think? Well, the traffic is getting worse and worse here. So I'd say, no, don't come here. <laughs> no, <I'm> just, <laughs> but no, and seriously, if you want to be an actor in TV and film, you really do have to come out to L.A. I was actually boxing in Washington, D.C. area. I lived there for about five years when I was a professional boxer. When I decided to quit and go back to acting, I actually moved back to New York for about six months. And I was working at a club called The China Club. It was about all 2000. And an actor named Michael Rappaport came in there. Monday nights at the China Club were always the nights that all the you know celebrities and different actors would come. It was like the popular night. So I was there bouncing and really having no luck in New York at all. I was really just kind of struggling along, just working this bouncing job, and i get like, you know, do some extra work here and there. And Michael Rappaport, the actor, came in on a Monday night, and I pulled him aside. I just said, hey, can I ask you a question? When you made it, I knew he was from New York. I said, did you make it here, or did you make it in L.A.? He goes, what do you want to do? Do you want to do TV and film? And I said, yeah. He goes, well, you got to go to L.A., man. And he gave me that advice. And I think another month or two later, I was on my way in my pickup driving out to L.A. And I never looked back. You had a focused way straight to L.A. But, you know, you yeah. said you've been in L.A. almost two decades. So if you've seen things change tremendously, because it's so different now 
from back in the days and I've seen a lot of things change here in the city of dreams and whatever and all that that we call it yeah, but sure. uh, a lot has changed sure. you've probably seen a ton of things change in the business the way people do things I think there's more opportunities mm -hmm. now what do you think I think there's so many opportunities now first off when I first came to LA it was January 2001 that's when I first came here and everybody had a, what's called uh, Thomas Guides and that's how you got around in the city you had like a big booklet and it had on each page was a different part of the city. And that's how you got along. When you got an address for an audition, you would look in the back of the Thomas Guide to where that street is on what page, and then you'd go to that page. And that's how I learned my way around LA because you didn't have GPS and you know all these uh, Google Maps and all that stuff. I think you could print out MapQuest. Remember MapQuest? Oh yeah, MapQuest is uh, still around, right? Yeah, yeah I think so, around. I don't know. But the main way you got around were these Thomas Guides. And that was the first thing you needed as an actor in LA to get around to auditions and stuff. So we've come a long ways from there. And I think now it's just everything is more digital. Uh, you used to have to get like 300 headshots printed up, you know, and always have a headshot in your car. Now it's all digital. Everything's online. And you're right. There's so many, I mean, <laughs> there's, there's 500 different channels. There's different, you know, streaming platforms now. It's a wonderful time to be an actor. I'll tell you that. Oh, yeah. Besides the channels on cable and on the boxes, there's all these streaming platforms like Amazon, Hulu, Netflix, yeah. Shredder, sure. Shutter. So much is out there for every genre. There's endless opportunities, and each one is doing movies. You know, Facebook is getting into movies mm -hmm. and TV shows now. They're creating it's, their own channel. It's crazy how much stuff is out there, and I don't know how anybody keeps track of it all. <laughs> I really don't. Well, that's why you have to have an agent and a manager and a PR person yeah. and four wow. Advils, a doctor, and a bottle of gin. That's what you need to <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right, man. Well, yeah, you know I got what? my bottle of Aspirin. Here's the yeah. thing. MapQuest is still around, but everything else has changed. We just gave MapQuest yeah. a shout out. Don't use MapQuest. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Well, you know what, Sean? You were in a daytime drama called Young and the Restless. Mm -hmm. Has that mm -hmm. built you a certain fan following of the drama universe? You know, the YNR fan base is incredible. It's very large. I was on the show for three and a half years, and I learned a great deal. I think I did like about 260 episodes of that show. It was an incredible learning experience. And the fans of YNR, because YNR has been number one in daytime for over 30 years now. And it's number one in Canada. They play it over in France. It's a very popular show, and so it was... It was a lot of fun to be a part of such a great show, but not only was it fun, it was an incredible learning experience. Because when you're on a show that's been around for so long and it's been number one for so long, it is a fast moving train. And you have to be able to keep up with the workload and keep up you know, with the expectations of performing and memorizing and you know, really kind of making your character unique and fans dig your character. And the fans were amazing and I'll probably always be able to relate to the fans that were fans of that show in that time. So it was a lot of fun, man. Well, that's really wonderful was. to hear because being on a soap opera is not that easy. I know you get scripts like on the dot and you got to just act it out. If you're a great actor, you can pull it off. But if you're not, it shows. So that's why... <laughs> The good ones, they step from soap operas and they get into the movie world. And you've been in quite a bit of movies and stuff. Now you've landed Ford and versus the Ferrari. I said Ford and the Ferrari. <laughs> I was like, yeah, like you know, right, hair man. and the turtle. No, it's Ford versus yeah, yeah. Ferrari. So Ford versus Ferrari. In that movie, you have Christian Bale, mm -hmm. you have Matt Damon, you have John Barenthal, mm -hmm. Josh Lucas. How did it feel working with everyone? Man, everybody was great. You know, I think everybody was very professional. It was an incredible shoot to be a part of. You know, I got to go out to France for a week. First week of principal photography on the film we shot in France. And Christian Bale and I shot a scene. Didn't make the final cut. But being in France was amazing. And then I got to work on the last few weeks of shooting here in the Los Angeles area. And that's where we shot all the Daytona stuff. And that's what you see in the movie. And it was incredible. It was absolutely incredible. I'm good friends with John Bernthal. So he and I have known each other for probably since April 2000 and you know I have a long friendship we did one of our first projects together back in uh it was a it was an independent film called Mary Mary 
And uh, we played best friends in that movie. And then who knew that years later he'd become one of like he became one of my best friends. And so when I got to audition for Ford versus Ferrari, you know, a lot of people audition for it. But when you book a role before they confirm you, they call you up and say, hey, we put a pin in you and put a pin in you means like you're you're on a veil. You're on a veil for this. Uh, to make sure the dates are available and all that stuff, but it's looking good, like you're going to get picked for this. So I called him up and I was like, you're not going to believe this. They put a pin in me for the movie you're in because he'd already been cast. And I was like, you're not going to believe it. That'd be, this would be great. And sure enough, I got on the movie. And so when we shot here the last couple of weeks in Los Angeles, he and I got to hang out a lot on the set. And that was, that was pretty fun. That was pretty great. You wow. know, because cool. we both, we both, we, yeah, we both had a long career doing this stuff and so it was, it was pretty awesome to work with one of your best friends that must be so much fun it's your best buddy and you guys get to hang out on somebody else's dime that's the best thing in the universe yeah, <laughs> yeah. Get- making a race car movie uh right? you know with uh one of your best friends and you know with the cast like christian bale and matt damon and tracy letts uh, all these fantastic actors ray mckinnon i it, mean it's really great well, what a macho movie, right? A car versus a car, right? That's the uh, yeah, pinnacle it. of the man cave thing, right? All these cars pinned on their walls. So you and John Barenthal are buddies. You guys box together, right? You're an ex-pro boxer. He mm-hmm. you know, looks like he can kill somebody because of the roles he plays. He's a, put this like mental yeah. thing in the world that I will kill you if you get in my way. <laughs> um, I know he's not like that yeah. in real life. Really cool guy. But, uh, yeah. you know, he really puts his heart into things. And we want to get him on the show and talk to him about his career and stuff like that. But I know acting is your love, but you also love comedy. You're a comedian and you yeah, tour. How true. is that for you? It's wonderful. Uh, you know, I get to perform uh, at some of the clubs here in Los Angeles. And I'm a regular at a comedy club called the Ha Ha Comedy Club in North Hollywood. And, you know, I started doing comedy, man, I think I think it was like 2009, 2010. I started doing comedy and, and it just kind of changed the whole outlook on life and the business. And I had been at a party and told a funny story to friends. And I always liked that feeling of making people laugh. That's really something I've always enjoyed. I think I come from a family of storytellers. We all like to sit around and spin a yarn and tell a good story. And there's nothing like it. And so to learn how to do that and make a room full of strangers laugh seemed like a logical path for me. And and I wasn't very good when I first started. (laughs) You know, I, I, I bombed and and then you just get better at it. You get better at it. You get better at it the more you do it. And I think a lot of things in life are like that, is that you just get better at something the more you dedicate yourself to it and the more you do it, you just learn and grow. And it's been amazing. It's been amazing. And I think we've got a show this weekend, Friday night, tomorrow night at the Ha Ha Comedy Club. <laughs> if it goes out before then, if anybody hears it, uh, I'm at the Ha Ha tomorrow night in North Hollywood. The Ha Ha tomorrow night. When this yeah. comes out, how was the Ha Ha, right? That's what we're going to ask them. <laughs> how was it? <laughs> it was great. Put it this way. You can catch me most weekends at the Ha Ha Comedy Club in North Hollywood if you want to come out. We'll tell the fans to go out, especially here in the L.A. area. Actually, yeah. our fans are all over the world. They love to support our guests and their favorite actors right and on. artists. Right on. So, now let me tell you something. I got to tell you this. My brother... He is a car fanatic. He oh, yeah. loves F1, Formula One racing. He follows it. Right. He goes to all right. their stuff. And let me tell you this. It's expensive to be a Formula fan. They're all in these major, amazing cities. And he follows all of that. And he spends tens of thousands of dollars a year to follow it. And he loves it. And I told him, I said, you know what? We're going to have Sean Kerrigan from Ford and Ferrari. He's like, yeah. wow, that's cool. Ask him, did he get to drive any of the cars? Okay, so I'm glad you asked that. We had some of the best racers. And one thing I will say about Ford versus Ferrari, I'll jump in here real quick and just say this as well before I tell you that, is that it is a racing movie, but it is a racing movie that had tons of heart. And it's an incredible story about these guys and how brave they were and to putting their lives on the line for the thrill of racing and it's touching and uh, it's a great movie and it's a racing movie, but it's got tons of heart. And these guys, the, the, you know, the guys that came in and drove these cars, we had some of the best racers in the world come in and race these cars for these, for this movie. 
And to claim that I was uh, in control of anything, uh, you know, I would I would be lying, you know, to say that 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 I wasn't I was in the hands of, of some of the best racers in the world. And these guys, when you're shooting some of the scenes that you see me in, I'm in what's called a biscuit. And I'm not sure exactly where they get that that name from, but what happens is the front axle of the race car that I'm in is connected to the back of a turbocharged truck. So I'm being towed around at well over a hundred miles an hour. And all the other racers are actual racers that are racing around us. And so uh, the cameras, there's four cameras on the hood and it captures, it captures all the reactions and, and, you know, the, the, all the motion of, of the, of the race and it being in the middle of some of the best racers in the world and, and having them race around me while, while I was, you know, acting like Walt Hansgen in that car was one of the most exhilarating things I've ever done in my entire life. Wow. And, and I, you know, I, 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 I'm truly, truly grateful to Jim, James Mangold. I'll forever be grateful for him for casting me as Walt Hansen because I got to experience that. And I don't know if, uh, I don't know if a lot of people ever get to feel what the, I like, I actually felt what that felt like, you know, with the engine and going around those turns at high speed and having cars coming right next to me. And like, I got to feel what that was like to be in a race car racing like that. And even though I, even though I wasn't controlling it, it was, it was incredible. And it, it one of the, one of the coolest, coolest uh, amusement rides you could ever go on as far as I'm concerned. It was amazing. Well, for people that don't know what a biscuit car is, it's basically a drivable process trailer, right? It's powered by like yeah. strong engines, gives you the feeling of driving, lets them be on the road. So when actual races are mm-hmm. side by side with you, it seems like you're actually driving a vehicle and uh, yeah. it still goes fast. It's still very powerful. Yeah. And there's a camera yeah. rig and a driver there and you're just like, man, that must have felt so good. It was incredible. And, and you know, something else about this guy, you know, the guy that I got to play, Walt Hand. And let me say a little bit about him, um, because the guy was one of, was an incredible racer and he didn't start, he grew up in his dad's auto body shop, didn't start racing until the age of 32, uh, goes to Watkins Glen, sees, watches a race at Watkins Glen, comes home, thinks to himself, man, I can do that. Goes and buys an XK 120, uh, a Jaguar XK 120 and brings that home. He took out a loan. His wife says to him, what are you doing with this? He goes, I'm going to start racing it. She's like, what? You took out another loan on a car. So, you know, she almost wants to leave him because of it, thinking he's lost his mind. Next thing you know, two years later, he wins at Watkins Glen. Starts racing. Think he won Watkins Glen four times over the next decade. He started racing for the next 15 years. I think he won Watkins Glen four times. Uh, won Bridge Hampton, won Virginia International Raceway multiple times, I think. I think he won at Sebring. He, was, he just turned into an incredible racer. He actually raced against Carroll Shelby a number of times, too. And I think he even beat Shelby a couple times. And so he was an incredible racer. Unfortunately, you don't get to see what happens to him. That scene didn't make the movie, but he actually crashes the night before Le Mans in 1966. He was on a test run at Le Mans the night before that race. He lost control, and I think it was like an escape road. In 65, it was an escape road, and then in 66, he didn't know it, but they had put up a concrete barrier to protect the spectators. So it was nighttime, it was raining, and he went headfirst into that concrete barrier. And He was in a coma for five days, and he never woke up. He he died in France. It was a sad story. And so that storyline didn't make the movie, but, um, you know, probably because there's so many different things when you see the movie that went on. But he was an incredible racer. And another example of these guys back then, they just, they put their lives on the line. And, you know, it was a very dangerous sport. It still is a very dangerous sport, but it was even more dangerous back then. Oh, yeah. There wasn't as many safety stuff. The advancement of technology saves lives, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Walt's crash didn't make the final cut of the movie, but uh, you'll see me at Daytona. You know, we have a great scene. I go back and forth to Ken Miles. But that being said, 
The movie is fantastic. One of the most perfect movies I've seen in a very, very long time. And you'll feel like you're actually in, you'll feel like you're in the race car. The way Jim shot this, you feel like you're in the car sometimes, like you're on the road and you you really feel like you're, you're a part of this movie when you watch it. I know everybody's seen it or is going to see it. And now, especially after this interview, they want to watch it because uh, the way you expressed it, it's uh, pretty heartwarming. And I, I think fans should go and see yeah. it. Aside from this movie, you've been in so many TV shows, like countless. <laughs> what is one of the f most favorite TV shows you worked on? Oh, man, there were so many good ones. Uh, well, obviously, my favorite TV show that I ever worked on was Young and the Restless. And that was because... I got to play a character for three and a half years. So when you play a character that long, you start to really know that character, like the back of your, it's like your alternate personality. And so that was kind of fun. I really enjoyed that. I that got to be Stitch, married on right? the show. And young and the Restless. Yeah, that was <laughs> Stitch. Yeah. Yeah. I loved Modern Family. Modern Family was a great set to work on. I thought that was one of the funnest sets I've, I've worked on. And just everybody was so kind. And everybody was just so open, and that, and you see how, you see how a show like that is so successful because they created such a wonderful environment on set that you know you can't help but have fun when you're when you're making it. And so that was I really enjoyed being on that set. Uh, did an episode of that. There's so many. I did a show called The Event. It was on NBC. Uh, I did a half a season on that with the great and the guy I acted with the most, I was his, I was like his right hand man was an actor named Clifton Collins Jr. And fantastic actor, but an even better, even better person. He was just really, I learned a lot from him and just watching the way he uh, handled himself on a set, a total pro and just, just one of the kindest guys ever. And, Funny. I think I worked on it for three or four months, um, maybe even five months, but because we did half a season, and it was, it was, man, that was, that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that. So many different things that you get to do in this business, and when you're working, it's amazing. It's the best thing to work, right? Because <laughs> that way you can <laughs> yeah, pay yeah. your bills and sure. do all that. But That's aside right. from all that, you're a co-founder of a company called Woodhead Entertainment, where you do original shorts, like feature films, stuff like that. We'll put that aside for now. Recently, well, I don't know recently, whatever mm -hmm. we call it recently, you did a performance like Brett Favre. It went viral. <laughs> it went nuts. Yeah. What made you think yeah. of that? Brett Favre, and how yeah. was that for you? Because a lot of people uh, well, watched it. Yeah, Brett Favre, What Should I Do? is what it's called. And you can look it up on YouTube. It's called Brett Favre, What Should I Do? And it was around the time that Brett Favre had come out with all the sexting scandals when he was sending pictures of his junk to that uh, sideline reporter. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and he kept retiring and then unretiring and then retiring and unretiring. And so I was doing comedy one night and this guy came up to me afterwards and he goes, hey, uh, you know, I, I noticed you kind of resemble Brett Favre my buddy and I, we wrote this skit about Brett Favre, and we were just wondering uh, if you would want to make this. And I was like, yeah, sure, why not? And we went ahead and made this video, and it went viral and played parts of it on ESPN. And it was it just just kind of, you know, you know, just kind of exploded. And uh, it was just really, it was just, it was a lot of fun. And then from that, we started making other funny videos, you know, different funny videos. And it was great. And then we all started doing our own thing. And then I went off and started doing Young and the Restless. And then, and then these guys uh, created the show American Vandal, which was on Netflix, which is one of my favorite shows that I got to work on. So I played Coach Rafferty on uh, American Vandal. So I got to work with those guys again. Well, that it was, was a good it show. It was a lot of fun. That was a great yeah, show. Yeah. American Vandal or is a great show. People could watch it on Netflix. And yeah. isn't it crazy that, or not crazy, but isn't it such a weird world where you work on this one little funny skit with them and it leads to so many other yeah. amazing stuff? Yeah. It really, it was, it was really interesting. And, you know, when, when the three of us, you know, it was Dan, Tony, and me, myself, when we shot the Brett Favre video and it, and it did really well, Months went by and then I like hit him up again. I was like, Hey guys, I really liked working with you guys. What else you guys got? You got some other stuff. And then we just started doing funny stuff. It just kind of took off. And, you know, we did other funny videos. We did, we had, there's a, there's a great video 
that's on the internet called Last Words with Mark Pellegrino and John Bernthal. And that, so if you get a chance, look that one up, Last Words with Mark Pellegrino and John Bernthal. That, that's uh, another one, another funny video we did. And then we've got other ones. We've got Extremely Dark Night. We've got Shark Pool. We did a bunch of funny videos, Average Party. And, and it, just, uh, it just helped us get other work and then, you know, go on to create other things. And so as long as you're doing stuff in the business and, and trying to create funny content or trying to create content, period, you never know what road that's going to take you down and, and lead to other stuff. So it's been it's been a, it's been quite a journey, man. It really has. Oh yeah, really has. and that journey is great because you have some cool actor friends. You guys have talent, and when talent gets together, cool things happen and people want to see it. So is that what led you to Woodhead Entertainment? That was the company I'm talking about with Dan Peralt and Tony Ascenda. Nice. So that um, all worked together yeah. at the same time. It was all something that yeah. Happened. There, there you go. That's why I said we got to lead with yeah. the video first. Yeah, and that's exactly what happened. It started with that Brett Favre, what should I do video. And believe it or not, you want to hear something funny. I did. I recently did a commercial with a guy who was a wide receiver for the San Diego Chargers. Los Angeles Chargers now. I can't get used to that. Yeah, we have to say <laughs> the Los correct, Angeles Chargers. okay? <laughs> yeah. yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, they moved to Los Angeles. I can't get I still can't get used to that. <laughs> anyway, but he was a, he he was a wide receiver with them when they were in San Diego, and and he told he told me that when that video came out, it just made the rounds through the whole NFL, and everybody would always send that video to Brett Favre. <laughs> and, Probably got and, like a thousand and, times. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, they, they just it was hilarious, and so he still he still quotes it to me. The uh, Kasim he, he hit me up the other day. And, and was quoting the the video. It's really funny. And believe it or not, Brett Favre actually saw it. I had a buddy of mine who was doing a charity event with Brett Favre. He started texting me. He goes, you're not going to believe this. I'm at a charity event. I'm sitting at the table with Brett Favre. I got to ask him if he saw the video. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, we'll see how this goes. And then I guess as the, the charity event went on, Later and later, he asked Brett, he, you know, they, they had more drinks or whatever. You know, he got to know him a little bit. And then he said, hey, man, I have to ask you a question. A buddy of mine did a video playing you. He goes, uh, did you see it? And he said, Brett Favre got real quiet. He looked down. He goes, yeah, yeah, I saw it. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, did you think it was funny? And he goes, he paused. He goes, yeah, I had a few chuckles. <laughs> so, so that was I got I got the nod I got the nod from from Brett Favre Brett uh, Favre he, he likes Brett Favre he likes Brett Favre what should I do he there you go him, Brett Favre or, uh, likes video. Brett Favre what should I do and if Brett Favre or any of his <laughs> team members are listening to this thank you for giving your yeah. nod because yeah. the other Brett Favre here loves that <laughs> <laughs> right on man you look like you could be cousins you know <laughs> or brothers yeah who knows maybe we're long lost cousins I don't know yeah, you never know right <laughs> you never know but yeah he was going through yeah. some stuff there for a while and that's funny how you guys just like picked it up and created something and the right moment it really was what else do you like to do what else is there that makes Sean Karen uh, <laughs> wake up in the morning for yeah. <laughs> What else is there time in the day for? Uh, yeah. <laughs> let's see. I, I'm on an improv team currently uh, at the Groundlings right now and trying to do shows there. And I went to the improv program at IO West before it closed down here in, in uh, Hollywood. Improv Olympic was a big improv theater. It closed down a couple of years ago. But uh, before it did, I went through the program there and used to do shows once a week there with my uh, improv team, Leg Day Improv. What so are they I, called, so Leg I, Day? I, I try to... I, <laughs> yeah, it's called Leg Day. Leg Day. Leg Day. That's yeah, good. That was, that was the name of it's Leg yeah, Day, that was bro. the name of our <laughs> yeah, that was the name of our improv group, Leg Day. Ah, that's and funny. So we uh, yeah, yeah, so we were, I was on a team with them, trying to balance my acting, uh, my stand up, and my improv, and just trying to trying to hone those skills. And then when I'm not doing that, I'm at the boxing gym working out. Love my beach runs. I live near the beach. Here in, uh, right on the border of Venice and Santa Monica, so I like to get out by the beach. I used to I used to surf a lot. I haven't had a lot of time for that lately, but I like to surf. I like to ski, uh, and I like I love to travel, man. I love to see I love to see things and see the world. Fortunately enough, you know this this profession, you know the profession of acting, 
you know, you, you know, sometimes you get to go see, go, go different places. Like for Ford versus Ferrari, I got to go out to France for a week. I got to, I got to, I got to go to Le Mans. I got to see the rate. I got to see the rate where they race. I got to see the cars. I got to go to the 24 hour uh, of Le Mans uh, museum. Uh, you know, uh, I got, I got to, I got to be there. I got to be in, I got to stay in the same hotel where a lot of the racers stay when they're, uh, when they come to town. And so it, it, it was, I got to live that experience. And I think that's the great thing about being an actor is you get to you get to step into these roles and go to different parts of the world and really feel what it, what it was like to be someone else and to be the, to, to live a different life and, and to see a different place. And, and it's just, I'm so blessed, man. I'm very lucky. And I just hope that like any actor, all, all, all you do is you just hope for more work and just hopefully it just keeps coming in the way it's been coming in so far. You know, it's, a, it's been, a, it's been a long road. Well, so, you know I'm what? happy, happy to be where I'm at. Well, hopefully keep you busy. But besides that, besides all of that, I always ask this question, Marvel or DC? <laughs> Marvel. Why? Because my best friend played the Punisher. <laughs> there you go. So I got to stay loyal to Marvel. <laughs> that's it, so, huh? That's, that's only why. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, that's basically it. <laughs> well, so, you know what? Yeah. You can work with another movie with him, and that's it. Bros for life. There you go, man. Yeah. It seems like your life is so rounded around so many things that you're so busy. It's like a constant of doing so many things. Do you recommend that for people, or do you recommend them to <laughs> focus on one avenue or the other? What do you think? Because you have all these oh, things. Oh, man. It's so interesting you ask that because I think that sometimes I'm like, am I doing too much? Am I like... Am I spinning too many plates at once? But I just find that by keeping myself busy, it just keeps my creative juices flowing. And, you know, I'm sure there are times where I feel like I'm spread a little bit too thin. But, you know, we're only on this planet one time. And I enjoy doing a lot of different things and wearing a lot of different hats and experiencing a lot of different things. And so... I don't know that I'll ever, you know, kind of settle down to one thing. And I, I really enjoy like doing a lot of different things. And that's kind of what the goal of my career has been is I want to be versatile. So in doing that, it doesn't leave me a lot of free time, but when I'm doing a really cool role or if I'm, you know, over in Spain somewhere, or if I'm even shooting here in, uh, on the young and the restless or when I was, doing all this, you know, shooting a commercial, it's, it's, it just provides, or if I'm doing stand up, it just, it just provides me with a different experience. And I think, uh, I think, you know, I want to see and do it all probably. And maybe, uh, maybe that's a little bit, you know, too lofty a goal, but it works for me. So that's what I'm doing. <laughs> hey, well, if it works for you, it's working great. And what kind of advice do you give for like new actors? What do you want them to do? What do you think they should do to skip the two decades you put into it and just get ahead really quick in a year? Because there's some actors out there that within their first year, they're like launched. You know, man, I, I, in, in all honesty, I think it's just I think everybody's career is different. And, you know, I think um some people are luckier than others. They, they happen to be in the right spot at the right time. I myself think that, you know, you never know what opportunity is going to be around the corner. So just try to be prepared, um, get good, some good schooling in, become a member of a rep good repertory theater company. I was a member of a uh, playhouse West repertory theater company for years. And before that, I was at the Beverly Hills Playhouse under Milton Kinsellis. So, um, and then, and then I went, and then I ended up at, at Playhouse West Repertory Theater Company under Bob Carnegie. And, you know, it's a community that it was a community of actors, and you, you, I learned a great deal. And I think that's something that's very important is to find yourself a good community of actors. Um, you know, find a good theater company or a good school to be uh, involved in because sometimes opportunities come through through that. I actually did a, a movie with uh, Jennifer Hudson. It was directed by Ashley Judd 
Uh, and I got that from uh, from play, being a member of Playoffs West and having a good relationship with Bob Carnegie. He recommended me to Ashley Judd. And the next thing you know, she cast me in this uh, in this movie, Call Me Crazy. It was on Lifetime. And it was about mental illness. And and, I'm, and next thing you know, I, I'm sitting there acting uh, one night with Jennifer Hudson. It was, it was a, it was an incredible experience, but so what I'm saying is find yourself a good community of actors or a good school and be ready for those opportunities when they present themselves. Just stay the course. Always try to create something, find a great place to study. People that I think are cool to give that advice. I asked them and you're one of those cool people. Oh, thanks man. (laughs) No, you are. You're a cool dude. You're making it happen. And the Comic-Con universe now knows you. Have you ever been to a Comic-Con event? I actually went to one uh, down in New Orleans. John called me down there. He said, hey, you got to come down to New Orleans. So I got to go down there. Uh, to New Orleans for one. This was years ago, but uh, Stephen Young was there. John was there. Um, yeah, oh, so it was. It was. It was, it was a lot. One. Yeah, it was a wa- walking. Yeah, it was a walking dead. Down. Yeah, but it was. It was a. It was years ago. It was years ago. But but man, I had a great time. I had. A, I had a. It, it was. It was really cool, man. I, I really enjoyed myself. Well, we're hoping that one day you're in a panel or in Comic Con where the fans can meet you and hang out with you and uh, you never know so with that said would you work in a superhero movie would you want to be part of anything like that oh my god of course yeah i'd love to you I'd fit love to the be, role yeah. you, you look like you could be a superhero <laughs> well I'm thanks you, man. man i appreciate it <laughs> you, can, you can do it well it can uh, happen I, i'm down it can yeah. happen yeah, right on and you know the right people and you're doing the right thing and you have a lot of talent so why not so here's the thing sure You've been on a lot of sets. You go all over the world, and you love all sorts of movies. You love Marvel. I asked this question, too. Has anything paranormal ever happened to you? Oh, man. You know, I would say yes. <laughs> I will absolutely answer yes. It's all good. You're not crazy. Uh, don't worry. I, I got you. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. There, there's, a, there's a part of me that feels like I have a guardian angel that's with me sometimes. But then I also have, you know, I've had, uh, I've had situations where stuff has gone for a while there. You know, this is, uh, my ex and I, we, there, you know, she's, we used to live together and, and there was a while there where we thought, we thought there, there was, see, I feel stupid even saying it. I really do. You thought it was a ghost in the house? Yeah. That was hiding my stuff. And, one day we, we looked for this suit. I, I used to have this, this black suit, right? And the, I'll tell you this story. It's not, it's not the grass. Everybody's always, I don't know, nobody ever believes it, but I had this suit. We put it in the closet. It was in there, you know, for a while. One day I needed the suit for something. You know, I said to Suzanne, I go, Suzanne, did you, did you move my suit? I can't find my suit. We looked everywhere. We tore the, we tore the whole the whole, uh, you know, it's like a walk-in closet. I tur- tore that thing apart. Like looked everywhere. I'm like, this is crazy. I looked in my car. Maybe I left it in my car. Maybe I went to the, I went to the cleaners. I was like, did I take it to the cleaners? I it, this went on for a couple weeks. Then one day, just one day, I walked into the walk-in closet and I go, Suzanne, get in here. I had chills right there in the middle of the closet, hanging right there. And it was almost like it was hanging by itself. Like the other clothes were like pushed to the side. Hanging on a hanger by itself was my suit. I had chills. She had chills. She walked in. I go, get in here, get in here. And she walked in the walking closet. It's like, what? And I go, look. And I pointed at the suit and she's like, Oh my God. Oh my God. We're both just sitting there. We're both like, what the hell what like it, it was it was like that just like chills through you so the paranormal and something that we don't we, we don't we'll never really understand does it exist of course there's something something exists i don't know what it is i don't have any i don't have any uh any answers but i've seen a few things happen here or there and and i've also had some close calls in my life where I felt like, you know what? I think I have a guardian angel. 
And that's just kind of like, you know, I had some, I had some close, close calls. I, one time I was de- surfing down in Costa Rica cause I grew up surfing and I was surfing down in Costa Rica and I almost drowned out there. I lost my surf, came off my, my leash came off my, my ankle and lost my surfboard. And I was there in an impact zone, you know, losing my breath, losing my breath, getting held under. And this guy just appeared out of nowhere on his surfboard and was like, get on. And I jumped on his back and then we got worked over a little bit and he paddled me in and I sat there on that beach and I knew that day. And I, and I, I had seen my life flash before my eyes because there was another wave coming at me and I knew I was all out of air. And somehow this guy appeared on his surfboard. I jumped on his back. He got worked over a little bit. He paddled me in and the rest is history. I mean, but I, I've had moments like that where I like, I think to myself, okay, some grace of God got me out of that one. So, wow. Yeah, well, anyways, you know yeah. what? We're going to call so. you Sean nine lives Kerrigan from now on. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> that's a great sure. story. Sounds good, man. No, that's a great story. Yeah, it was and... a, yeah the guy's name was Lamb. 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 And uh, he was a cool dude. He was a cool dude. Well, we got to thank Lamb um, for saved saving me. your life. Yeah, he saved my ass that day. That's yeah. For sure. And yeah. Brett Favre, yep. there would have been no yeah, Brett right. Favre. <laughs> that's, that's right. That's right, man. I actually yeah. pointed to the team right now. They're going to share that on, on our Instagram page. So cool. We're going to go awesome. ahead and put that out so we can uh, have a laugh. And we'll tag Brett Favre. So, uh, you know. So you we'll got see. it. <laughs> right on, man. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah. That's funny. Well, you know what, Sean, with that said, you've been lovely. Thank you for the stories. Thank you for your advice. Thank you for coming on the show. You are welcome anytime on Comic-Con Radio. You just say hey, and the door's open, and we got you in here, brother. You're a really cool cat. Dude, that's awesome. We're going to follow you. We're going to get this episode ready, and we're going to launch it out to the universe and uh, we'll go from there. So with that said, are you ready to sign out from another amazing episode of Comic-Con Radio? Absolutely. Thank you so much, man. This, this was a lot of fun. I really had a great time. Well, here we go. And if people want to reach you on Instagram. The real Sean Kerrigan. And on Twitter, it's Sean Kerrigan. There you go. So ladies and gems, reach out to him. It's the real Sean Kerrigan. Don't go to the other Sean Kerrigan. He's not him. Don't follow that other guy. <laughs> follow the real Sean Kerrigan. Check it out. Follow him. Send him a post. Say what's up. Follow his movies, his shows, his private stuff, whatever you guys want to do. This has been an amazing episode. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Galaxy, and we're signing out from another amazing episode of Comic-Con Radio. You ready, Sean? We're going to blow a million kisses to the universe. Ready? Three, two, one. Mwah! A billion. Wow. There you go. Whoa, there you go. Sean gave all there you ladies go. out there a billion kisses. <laughs> and <laughs> keep that. Go right watch on, Ford and the Ferrari. Check them out. And Sean with that. Ford versus s- Ferrari. <laughs> yeah. I said Ford versus yeah. Ferrari. Did I say it wrong? I said- yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> all good, man. All good. Well, you know what? With that said, peace. Peace. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Galaxy signing out from another amazing episode of Comic-Con Radio. Tune in for your daily shows of Comic-Con Radio. Go to comic-con-radio.com. Reach us on social media, Instagram, at Comic-Con Radio. Comic-Con Radio, taking the world one listener at a time. Dude, that was fun, man. That was great. Thanks so much, man. I appreciate it. This was fun, man. I really had a great time.